Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Claire Kane Whitcomb. For those of you that may have never been here before, welcome. Today I'm here to talk to you about metronoming. How to do it, why we do it, and some practical things that will help you in your daily practicing with metronoming. So, some studies have shown that the most effective way to practice is to multitask, to try to take on as many different coordinations as you can at one time. So that might mean you have to do all those things slowly, but you're doing them at once and you're able to play faster and faster the more you attempt to do them. So metronoming is no different. It's just another layer of coordination that you're adding to your playing so that you can listen to a metronome and listen to your playing and be taking in all these things at once. But it takes practice. I don't know anybody that can just do it. I remember very clearly when I first started playing viola when I was younger, struggling so much when it came to metronoming. And that's why I encourage everybody to get a private teacher because seriously, my private teacher helped me with metronoming so much, like way more than I ever could have done on my own. So, um, you know, I understood the concept of metronoming, but there were certain challenges. Sorry, there's a bug. I understood the concept of metronoming, but there are certain challenges that come along with it. Like what if you're starting on a pickup, you know, like an upbeat, uh, an eighth note and not on a quarter note. So anyways, we're gonna talk about some things um, and I'm gonna give you examples and we're gonna metronome together. So maybe if you don't have a private teacher, that, that hopefully this will help you. And if you do have a private teacher and you just want some more help with metronoming, then this is the video for you. I really think metronoming things help you learn it quickly. It kind of forces you to go at the metronome's pace and not the comfortable pace that you're taking. So you're building in good rhythm from day one. That's the, the idea anyway. So as soon as you have a good foundation on your instrument, technically speaking, I really suggest you get a metronome. I actually use an app on my phone called Pro Metronome. Yeah, like I've, I've talked about this app before in my channel um, because it's just so helpful and it's free, so like why not, you know? So how much metronoming should you do every day? I really spend about 90% of the, my time practicing with metronome. And I'm not exaggerating, like yeah, I would say the vast majority of my practice time is spent metronoming. I spend a lot of time playing with recordings too, but metronoming really, really helps ingrain uh, this rhythm that then you can maintain it and take it into your performances. So it's weird because you start to like hear the metronome in your head all the time, like whenever you're playing the thing you worked on with the metronome. Does that make sense? You always have this awesome inner rhythm going. So I always suggest starting off slow with your metronome. Slow practice is the best form of practice you can do. That's really how you begin building this massive coordination of all these things you have to focus on at once. So you wanna go slow enough to be able to do everything that's on your music. So right now my metronome is set to 40. So I just wanted to show you that there's this blinking light on it that gives you each beat. You wanna try not to look at that blinking light. I know, I, I think everybody is like, oh, blinking light, I'm going to look at that. Honestly, you wanna be good at playing with the metronome without looking at the metronome because you have music to look at or maybe you're playing from memory, I don't know. But anyways, when you're in a performance situation, you're not gonna have your metronome to look at. So you wanna be able to rely on it by ear. Metronoming really isn't fun until you're able to make a game out of it. I remember getting so frustrated with my metronome back in the day. Um, and so I understand why a lot of people stop doing it because it's not easy to get. So if you're struggling with it, you're not alone. So what I mean by making a game out of it is by taking a passage that you're struggling with and you start it really, really slow, like 40 is how I usually start really hard passages, but it just depends on what it is really. So you wanna take it at a, a pace that's super easy for you, something to where you're not struggling to keep up. So to use this as an example, I am playing Vox Courant from his first cello suite. And I actually am not gonna start at 40, I'm gonna start at 70. Oh, okay, so this starts with a pickup, an eighth note pickup. So we're in three, so three beats per measure, 
and we're starting with a pickup, which is one of the hardest things about metronoming is how do you jump in? That is probably the number one mistake that most people make when it comes to metronoming is they don't count themselves off. They just try to guess on when to come in and that's so unreliable and you'll never feel really good about your metronoming if that's what you're doing. So we're gonna subdivide, we're gonna count. So my pickup note is an eighth note. So we're gonna count eighth notes before we start, like out loud. One and two and one and two and. So I'm gonna count to two and then I'm gonna come in on the and. One and two and one and two. So you always want to count off. That's like the number one thing that people do wrong is they just try to jump in. And the more you do this, the quicker you get about not having to count off so much because honestly in orchestra, like a conductor gives you like an upbeat and that's all you get. So you get really good at picking up the tempo quickly the more you do this kind of thing. But if you're a beginner metronomer, then I really want you to just count yourself off. So if you come in on a quarter note, count quarter notes. If you come in on a 16th note, count 16th notes before you jump into your 16th note. Does that make sense? I hope so. So we're just gonna do a little bit of this current. One and two. you're happy with how that went, you bump it up two clicks. So now I'm at 72. Just you inch your way up faster and faster. And then you keep doing that until you get it as fast as you want it. But honestly, I usually practice passages faster with the metronome than they're supposed to go because then when you take it at the real tempo, it actually feels a lot easier. So, yeah little trick of the trade for you. So metronoming really is about like doing it. <laughs> I know that's not the greatest advice, but you have to sit down and just start trying to do it and don't give up on it when it gets hard. If it's hard for you, it might be because you're going too fast. I think a lot of people try to go too fast too soon. So another hard spot is when you get to dotted quarter notes. I always count three eighth notes whenever I get to a dotted quarter note. And again, like this is mostly for beginners. So if you do need to count through it, I count three eighth notes. I really don't have to count through them anymore, but it's because I've been doing this for so long and you'll get there too one day. So I'm gonna jump down and start on the second line. One and two. So as you see, like counting is really important because you're actually instilling some confidence in your playing by doing that because you're not guessing, you know, you're being really accurate about your rhythm. And again, that kind of carries over into all aspects of your playing the more you do metronoming. So there's really a lot of good reasons to do it. So quarter note, you're fitting one note in every beat. In eighth notes, you're fitting two notes in one beat. Triplets is three and 16th notes are four notes and it goes on and on and on. If you're really having a hard time, you can always sing with a metronome or count or whatever, <laughs> clap maybe. Um, because sometimes taking your instrument out of the equation is really helpful. So you have to have the rhythm up here first. You know, you're never gonna play it if you can't speak it or say it or clap it. So. I never claim to be a singer. So I guess the motto of the day is to count, 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 count a lot. Cause that, then you're really crossing your T's and dotting your I's, dotting your I's, crossing your T's. You know what I mean? You're covering all your bases, but please remember to count yourselves in. Seriously, don't guess on where to come in. Don't just keep trying to jump in. You're actually wasting time by doing that. Just take the two seconds or less that it takes to count yourself off and then come in, you know, or ha keep having to start over a million times because you're just being stubborn. So I've really grown to love the metronome because I've seen how fast it makes me able to play certain things, pretty much anything, especially for auditions. Like if you are not metronoming, like, 
95% of your practice. I don't know what you are thinking. I don't know. That's just what makes me feel the most confident about performance is having practice with a metronome so much that you have like an invisible metronome in your head. Or at least that's the goal. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I hope you found this video helpful. If you're new to the metronome, good luck. Don't give up, keep trying. Make sure you're counting, all of that good stuff. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you have a really good rest of your day or night or week or year. I almost started singing the Friends theme just then. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> See you next time.